So this week I decided to test my pantry and see how it holds up in my own version of the pantry challenge. Let's see how I did. Hey friends, welcome to This Homemade Life. If you're new, I'm Courtney, and I do these What's For Dinner videos every single week. This one is a little different. I am doing my own version of the pantry challenge. I'm not a homesteader, I don't have a garden, but I do try to keep a very well-stocked pantry, a pantry that keeps me prepared for all kinds of things, gives me a lot of options when it comes to cooking, um, and just because of 2020, if I can't find things at the store now, we have a lot of um, food supply chain issues and things like that. My pantry has me prepared. I can switch gears and do something else, or I have some backup, things like that. So I decided I would give this whole pantry challenge a shot. My rules for myself are I'm buying uh, produce from the store because I don't have a garden. And my family does like to eat fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, salads, things like that. Um, I also don't have chickens or any kind of like dairy cows or anything like that. So I'm also purchasing eggs and dairy products from the store. Not really cheese, but like milk and stuff like that because I don't have access to that. And I don't like freezing milk. I did try that and I didn't enjoy it. So all of the meals that I'm cooking this week are from my pantry, but I did purchase fresh produce from the store that was all included in my grocery haul. Um, you should be able to find the link to that at the end of this video. Plus you can just go to my page and look at it. Most recent grocery haul, I think it's called Shopping My Shelves. So check that out if you haven't already. But this week I have a whole bunch of meals. Um, I'm gonna show most of the ones I talked about in my grocery haul. There's a couple you guys have seen before. I'm not gonna show you how to make ribs. I've shown you that before. I didn't show you how to cook steaks because I've shown you that before. But for things that I haven't shown or things I'm getting a little creative with in the kitchen, I'm sharing all of those recipes. So check it out. Let me know what you guys think of this. Try some of the recipes at home. If you're doing the pantry challenge, let me know down below in the comments. All right, let's get to cooking. All right, I'm making steak today, which I've shown y'all before, but I did want to take a minute to share this really cool like appetizer or side. I'm gonna use it as a side dish. I saw this, I really want to say it was Mandy in the making. Um, and it was so cool. I didn't write it down because it's really simple, um, but we're gonna make, I'm gonna call them, because I don't remember what she called them. I'm gonna call them tater tot baked potato cups. So I'm gonna take about four tater tots and put them into each one of these little muffin tin cups. I did spray some non-stick spray into the pan and I'm gonna pop these in my oven and I'm going to cook them right now at 350 just to kind of warm them through and get them soft. And then we are going to kind of like mash down the middle so that they fill up the cup like a little, you know, like a little pie kind of, and then we're gonna fill them. And you can really fill them with whatever you want, I think. I'm gonna use um, shredded cheese and bacon. I wanted to do some green onions. We'll see um, if I get them chopped up or not. It's kind of been a little bit of, little bit of a busy morning, uh, but we will still have these. Of course, you can put sour cream on them, a little butter, whatever you like. I'm sure you could even fill these with like ground beef or taco meat or something like that and make a full meal out of them. But I'm just gonna serve them on the side with a steak you know, steak and baked potatoes classic. I thought they'd be really fun. So I'm gonna pop these in my oven and let them cook for probably like 20 minutes. All right, these are out and they're soft. So I'm just gonna kinda push down in the very center. I just got a shot glass and I'm just gonna push down like that and it forms like a little cup. They are not crispy or anything. They're just soft enough for me to be able to mash them and work with them. We're gonna cook them some more though, so don't worry. I did shred some cheese. So here in just a minute, I'm gonna add some cheese and some bacon into these, and then we'll pop them back in so everything gets melty and crispy. I'm gonna crank the oven up to 400 for that, and they are gonna be delicious. All right, these are smashed. I did put them back in for about 10 more minutes to get them crispy. And now I want to season them real quick with some salt and pepper.
Then I wanna put a little bacon in each one of these. This is just some pre-cooked bacon I had in my freezer and I just chopped it up. And of course you could put any kind of meat you want in here. I'm just mimicking a baked potato and we'll put some cheese on most of these, but not all of them uh, so that my oldest son can enjoy them. And then once they bake for about 10 minutes to melt the cheese, then you can top them with whatever you want. It could be sour cream or not if you don't like it. However you want to top them. Maybe a little salsa, I don't know. I'm gonna put a little chive and parsley on each one and that'll be it. All right, friends, it is Monday night and we are going to make Chinese buffet style coconut shrimp, which if you've had it, it's not the one that's fried with the pieces of coconut on the outside. It's sweet and delicious. Um, I've never made it at home. I, I've only gotten it on the buffet. And quite honestly, my husband and I have not been to a Chinese food buffet in quite some time. Our oldest, that was his absolute favorite. So he just basically burned us out on Chinese buffets after a while. So I will um, link the recipe down below like I always do, but I'm gonna tell you just straight up, I'm gonna make some changes. So it calls for one cup of cornstarch to 12 ounces of shrimp. I have 16 ounces of shrimp and I just don't see that I'm gonna need a whole entire cup of cornstarch to bread this. So I'm going to just kind of put a few spoonfuls in. So I've got my shrimp, I cleaned them and I peeled them and all that not so fun to watch stuff and have them all ready to go. I'm gonna add a little salt and pepper first. All right, so I'm just gonna add in a couple of spoonfuls of this cornstarch here. Like I said, this is one thing I didn't stock up well on. I have this, which is now at half a container, and I have another one that's full. Um, I use this a lot, but I usually use it in smaller amounts. So hopefully I'll be okay through the rest of this, you know, eating out of my pantry thing that I'm doing. All right, and it says to use a zip top bag, but I've got a bowl with a lid, so why create more waste? I'm just gonna shake these guys around gently and get them fully coated in the salt and the pepper and the cornstarch. And then we're gonna do just like a gentle pan fry for these. And then we'll coat them in the coconut sauce and that really is it. I'm also gonna saute some spinach to go with it. I've got some egg rolls going into my air fryer. And this is my rice maker that Mike, my husband got me for Christmas. So I do have some rice going in there. That's gonna be dinner. I'm just gonna pour, I'm gonna make extra sauce so we can pour it over the rice, spinach on the side and egg rolls. All right, I've added a little bit of vegetable oil in the bottom of the skillet, and I am just gonna let that heat up for a minute, and then I'll add the shrimp, and just let them lightly brown, about three to four minutes, nothing too major, and then we will add our sauce in and let it heat up with the shrimp the last couple of minutes.
right, it's time to make the sauce. I'm gonna mix it up in this pan so I can just heat it up in here. Um, we need a half a cup, actually the recipe says quarter cup of sweetened condensed milk and a quarter cup of uh, coconut milk and three tablespoons of mayonnaise, but like I said, I'm doubling this. So I'm gonna double all that. I'm gonna put it in here and heat it up and then put the shrimp back in to finish cooking. There's the coconut milk and I get the full fat coconut milk and I just kind of put mine in a bowl because I knew I was gonna have to save part of it and shook it up so that the fat would kind of incorporate with everything else. All right, I'm gonna add in the sweetened condensed milk. And then finally, three tablespoons of mayonnaise, or for me, I'm gonna do closer to six. There we go. All right, I'm gonna turn the heat on and let this heat up gently and come together, and then we'll toss the uh, shrimp back in here with this sauce and get them all nice and coated and yummy, and we'll be ready to serve it. So tonight's dinner is so easy, it feels like it's cheating. I had some frozen refried beans that I made in my freezer. These could be canned as well if that's what you have. And I'm just putting that on a tortilla. Just smearing them on the bottom. And then I had some Tex-Mex pork, which I used for my son. It's just some pork that I seasoned um, I'm trying to remember, I think there's like rotel and garlic and onion and chili powder, uh, stuff like that. And I slow cooked it a while back and I made some burrito bowls for lunches with it, but I had some left over. So my son ate that and then I have this. This is ground beef and onion and hamburger seasoning. I used this for the cheeseburger pizza a couple weeks ago. So we're just gonna take this and pop this right inside our tortilla with the beans. You could add some extra seasoning to this if you want to, but I think it's fine because we're gonna top it with stuff anyway. And then I just want to roll this burrito up, tuck in my edges. I've got a pan heating up right now and we're gonna do this like a grilled burrito and then we're gonna top it with sauce. It's gonna be delicious. Let me turn you guys around. All right, so I'm just gonna take it seam side down into the skillet. I put just a little bit of oil on the bottom so it doesn't stick. And we're gonna let it just cook like this for a couple of minutes so it'll kind of still together, maybe get a little browning, add a little extra flavor, and then we're gonna smother it and cover it with cheese. All right, I toasted this on both sides. It helps to keep it sealed, it gives a little extra texture and flavor. So, I've got some red enchilada sauce. You could use queso or you could use green enchilada sauce. I just happened to have a can of this and thought it'd be tasty. And I'm just gonna top my smothered burrito with a generous helping of this red enchilada sauce. Then I'm gonna top it with some cheese that I shredded. This is just I think it's medium cheddar. I didn't put any cheese on the inside, so we'll be kind of generous with the cheese on the outside. And then I'm gonna pop this in the microwave for about 45 seconds just to melt the cheese. Happy Wednesday, friends. I am finally popping up in the video. I've been trying to be in my what's for dinner videos a lot more frequently just so that I can kind of chat with you guys a little bit and this week has been so busy. Um, we are back to homeschool this week and I changed curriculum so everything is just kind of, I don't know, it's just been a wild week. But I think I'm finally getting it under control. 
Um, tonight we're gonna have the oven roasted crispy chicken. Super excited about that. Uh, what else? Mac and cheese. I've got some leftover mashed potatoes. I've got some Brussels sprouts that I uh, quartered up right here behind me. We're gonna work with these here in just a minute. And then some homemade focaccia bread. I didn't film me making it. I never remember to do that. I think it's because I'd usually do it like early in the morning and then just let it hang out all day. It's a one day recipe, not one you have to make a day or two in advance. So I'm gonna try to remember to film that. I'm the worst about it. But here it is, I haven't baked it yet. It's just got some Kinder's Italian seasoning and olive oil on the top. So this is about to go into a 400 degree oven and it'll start cooking and then we'll put the chicken in there as well. Anyway, gonna be delicious. I'm looking forward to this meal. We've got some nasty, windy weather today. Just awful weather out there. It's like 44 mile an hour winds today. It's awful. The dirt is flying and this is just gonna be a really nice, comforting, soothing meal. We're gonna just kind of hunker down and hide from that weather. Let's get cooking. So here is my focaccia bread. It has just been rising and I do sprinkle the top with some Italian seasoning. It's the Kinder's Italian blend, but you can see it's like really, really puffed up. Lots of delicious air bubbles in there. It's gonna be light and fluffy. Got some olive oil on top, olive oil on bottom. So I'm just gonna bake this in my oven right now and get it going before we get the chicken in there. All right, I've got a cast iron skillet heating up over on my stove top. And then I have these uh, bone-in skin on chicken thighs. I picked these up maybe a month ago, um, probably not even that much or not even that long. But as you can see, I got them for $1.81 on special. I love picking these kind of deals up. I typically find them at Market Street. They have the best deals on meat. And so I always check when I go there. But I'm just going to sprinkle these with this Kinder's Italian Blend seasoning. I love this stuff. Um, so I've only been able to find it at Sam's Club. So if you're not a Sam's Club member, I am so sorry. Um, this stuff is incredible. I could even find it on Amazon. Really strange. It's one of those things I thought I'd be able to find everywhere. But my family loves this seasoning. I actually uh, have what I have here, plus two extra very large bottles because my family loves it so much and I don't want to run out. I bought a ton of it. I put it on all kinds of stuff. It's so delicious. I did find something in the Tones or Tonys that was pretty close to it. It's a Mediterranean seasoning, but it's still not exactly the same. I'm just gonna sprinkle this on, but you could use any seasoning or spice blend you want. Uh, really, roasting chicken is more about roasting the chicken. So I'm gonna start mine on the stove top in this cast iron skillet that I'm heating up really, really well, just to get a nice bit of color on this skin. And then we'll just pop it into the oven to let it finish cooking all the way through. I just want that color on the outside because color's flavor and we want that flavor. All right, I've had this heating up for a while couple minutes anyway so if we got a little sizzle that's good and I'm just gonna put all four of these in and then not move them and then I'll flip them over before we pop them in to the oven and now I'll just season this side There we go. And that's it. We're just going to let the chicken kind of steer for a little bit, flip it over and pop it into a 425 degree oven is what I have it set on. The bread's cooking in there. It'll all cook together and it'll be super delicious. Okay, everybody's flipped over and had a minute on that next side. I'm going to add a little bit of chicken stock in here just to put a little moisture in there. We're going to pop this in the oven and let it finish cooking in there. All right, I'm gonna cook some Brussels sprouts to go with the chicken. I've got some bacon grease that I melted in there. Every time I cook bacon, I just try to save the grease. I'm almost out. Haven't cooked bacon in a little while. I may have to add a little oil to the skillet, but hopefully that'll be enough. I'm gonna saute these, and then I'm gonna add some, I think I'm gonna do some smoked paprika and some Padilla Complete seasoning tonight, a little bit of honey, and then I have some chopped up bacon in my fridge. I cooked it the other day and I chopped it for something else. Oh, I didn't cut that one off. Uh, I chopped it for something else. 
So I've got a little bit left in here and I'm just gonna toss that in there just for some extra flavor. I think it'll be really good. And probably about it. They're just gonna be nice and cooked in the skillet. I'm trying to get a little color on them, hopefully. We'll see how that goes. Sometimes I get some really good color on them and sometimes I've got a lot like this and they wanna steam more than they wanna develop color. So we'll see how it goes. I did make a little bit of brown gravy. This is just the packet stuff. Um, I'm probably the only person that's gonna eat it anyway. So I have this and uh, I bought this for when I make things like in the crock pot. I use a lot of the powdered gravies for like my beef tips and rice and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm the only person that really eats brown gravy on anything else. So I just whipped up one cup of it. That'll be fine. And everything else is still cooking in the oven right now. All right, I did pull the focaccia bread out of the oven. It smells so good. My family loves this. I have some butter that's been softening on the counter that we'll put on it. And that will just be a nice, easy side. I was gonna do some of the Cheddar Bay biscuits because I bought a huge box of the mix at Sam's Club a while back, but it's been a hot minute since I made this and my family likes it so much. I was like, no, we're doing that tonight. All right, I let these cook down a bit and develop some color on them. My husband likes a lot of color on his Brussels sprouts. So I did let them cook for quite a while. And now we're just gonna season them pretty simply. I'm gonna use some of this Badia Complete Seasoning. Then I've got some smoked paprika. And then I'm gonna add honey. Probably, this is a lot of Brussels sprouts, so I'll probably do a couple of good dollops like that. You could do um, maple syrup too. Either one is fine. I'm gonna stir this around and let it cook for just another minute or two to kind of toast the spices. And these are pretty much done. I'm waiting for the macaroni and cheese to finish and my chicken is officially done right now. Once this is all together and on a plate, I will show you guys what it looks like. Hey friends, welcome back to the kitchen. It is Thursday. We have almost finished week one of this pantry challenge. I am super excited because this has gone so, so well. My family has loved every single meal. Last night, the roasted chicken was my husband's favorite by far. Um, he loved everything else so far, but that roasted chicken, he just kept saying, this is the best meal you've ever made for me. So I am kind of like feeling good about this challenge so far. I've already planned next week out and I am ready to go, super excited. Tonight we are doing the Mongolian beef noodles, but with turkey. I had found a huge sale on ground turkey at Market Street like a month or so ago. I picked up a bunch of containers. I've used some, but I have some left. So I thought, well, this is the perfect time to use some of those. So tonight we're gonna do that meal with ground turkey instead of ground beef. And I'm gonna do some broccoli with it just because I think that's the perfect pairing. I'm gonna start off tonight by just seasoning this a little bit with salt, pepper, garlic powder, and tossing it in the oven at 400 degrees for probably like 20 minutes. Give it a little char on the edges, a little flavor, cook it through, and then we'll mix it in with our dinner. It's gonna be fantastic. All right, I've got my broccoli out on my sheet tray. I put just a little bit of olive oil on it, like maybe two tablespoons for this whole thing of broccoli, and it is a lot. I'm gonna add some pepper. And then instead of some salt and some garlic powder, I have some garlic salt, so we'll just use that. And just sprinkle that right over the top. I'm hoping that there's gonna be plenty of this broccoli left over for my lunch tomorrow. Roasted broccoli and roasted cauliflower are two of my absolute favorite things. So I can just sit down and eat that and nothing else for lunch and be super happy. I'm gonna pop this into a 400 degree oven and let it cook for like 15 or 20 minutes. All right, turkey is in. I'm just gonna break it up and crumble it. And I'm gonna cook this until uh, it's nicely browned and all of the liquid has kind of evaporated out of the pan before I add any more ingredients. I've discovered that is the trick. If you want ground turkey to mimic ground beef, 
you have to cook it a little bit longer. And by a little bit longer, it's probably gonna take me about 15 minutes or so to get it to that point. But once you do, it is so close to ground beef, it's so hard to tell the difference. So that's how I've been doing it and that's what I'm going to do today. It'll release a lot of moisture in the beginning. There'll be a lot of water in this pan but it'll all cook out and then it'll be really, really good. And that's when we'll add all the fun flavors to make this delicious. All right, this has been cooking for a little bit. You can see it's getting a little color on it. There's no more liquid left in the pan. That is the way I like it. it makes it taste a lot better. The texture is really great on it. And it is a fantastic and budget friendly substitute for ground beef, which really is kind of expensive right now. All right, because this is ground turkey though, and it doesn't really have much in the way of fat left in the pan, I am gonna add a little bit of sesame seed oil. Um, this is not in the recipe that I have, but we're gonna add it anyway, just because I feel like this needs it. So I did about a teaspoon of that. And then I am going to add more than what the recipe calls for because I like extra sauce with mine. So the recipe will make enough sauce, just enough sauce. This will make extra, and because I'm serving it with a bunch of noodles, I, I want the extra sauce. So I've got about a cup of chicken or beef broth right there. Okay, I've got some soy sauce. The recipe calls for half a cup. I'm not quite doubling this just because it would be so strong. I just added a little extra. All right, the recipe calls for half a cup of brown sugar. That is half a cup. And now I'm gonna add about a quarter cup extra. Stir that in. All right, it does call for a lot of garlic. I'm using my confit garlic just because I have it, I don't want it to go bad, and I absolutely love this stuff, it is so delicious. But it does call for six cloves of garlic, and confit garlic is a lot more mild than regular garlic, so I added in just a lot. And it's not gonna be overpowering, it's gonna be a really nice, sweet, mild garlic flavor. We have just really been loving this stuff. All right, the recipe calls for four tablespoons of hoisin. I will do extra. And then it calls for four teaspoons of ginger. I, of course, did some extra of that as well. And then finally, it calls for some red pepper flakes. I'm not gonna do that. I'm using this stuff because we love it. You could use sriracha or anything like that. It's perfectly fine. There we go, that's about a tablespoon. I'll just mix that right in. And then we're gonna let this simmer for a little bit. And all the flavors can kind of come together. And when my pasta is almost completely done, I will do a cornstarch slurry to thicken this up. All right, this is simmered for a while. I mixed a tablespoon of cornstarch and a tablespoon of water. And I'm just gonna dump that in and it will just immediately start to thicken the sauce. I may need to do more because I did double the recipe and I didn't think about that. So I probably need to add another tablespoon, but we'll let this simmer for a minute and see. There is my noodles. I did go ahead and drain them, and I'm just gonna add my sauce right in here. Let's see if I can do this backwards. I don't know if I can. There we go. 
and then I'm going to mix so that the sauce coats all the noodles and it gets all nice and flavorful. The meat mixes in with everything and it's going to be delicious. I can smell it. It smells so, so good. I love Asian inspired food. One of my favorite things. I love those flavors. So I'm totally looking forward to this. I'm about to pull the broccoli out of the oven and I will just serve that with this so everybody can have as much or as little as they want. And that will be dinner. Hey friends, it is Friday night here at my house, the last night of the What's For Dinner video, and we are having Little Smokies in barbecue sauce. That's right, I'm going all out, super fancy, super challenging meal, I am only kidding. This is one of my husband's favorite things. I've got a bag of Little Smokies, they were frozen. I had a big economy size pack, and I had this half left over, so I froze them. I've got some mac and cheese. I was gonna do couscous, but my husband wanted mac and cheese, and um, my middle son Camden wants mac and cheese, so mac and cheese it is. We're gonna put some barbecue sauce on that. We're gonna make the mac and cheese. I've got some leftover broccoli in the fridge. Sounds like dinner to me. Pretty quick, pretty easy, pretty painless. I'm ready to rock this one out. Here we go. All right, so real quick, I did whip up a batch of uh, Cheddar Bay biscuits. I actually, I don't know, probably like a month ago, bought the mix at Sam's Club and it's been in my pantry. I've been wanting to use it, but I keep forgetting about it because I put it on the top shelf and I'm short and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I made the biscuits today. They're about to go in the oven. They cook for like 14 to 16 minutes and then you melt the butter with the stuff and brush it on top and they're super yummy, super delicious. Um, like I said, broccoli left over from last night. I didn't eat it for lunch because I was busy today, which is perfect because there's enough for everyone to have broccoli tonight. Yum. I pulled out mac and cheese. Uh, Cam loves the white cheddar mac and cheese, as do we. And I still have a box or two of the Kraft left and then a bunch of the HB brand, which is our personal favorite. So I thought we'd shake it up and have the Kraft tonight, just so we're not stuck with that at the end and don't have any of the good stuff left. And then on to the Little Smokies in barbecue sauce. So easy, so simple. Here we go. All right, I'm just gonna pour my Little Smokies in. This is like the equivalent of one pan, or I'm sorry, <laughs> the equivalent of one of the regular size packs. Um, I bought one of those giant ones, it's like seven and some change. I, I don't know how much it weighs, but it's the big pack. And I just split it in half. So this is like the size of one of the regular packs. And you can go as easy or as fancy as you want with this. You could just pour your favorite barbecue sauce on top and cook it. Um, we like the Stubbs barbecue sauce, but we like some of the HEB sauce too. We're really not picky. And I usually have a couple of different kinds of sauces on hand just because we're not picky. <laughs> so I'm gonna add some of that. It doesn't take a whole ton. That's probably like half a cup or so. And then you can dress it up as much as you want. I'm gonna add in a little bit of Worcestershire sauce because I just kind of like the flavor burst that it brings. You can add some hot sauce if you want it spicy. My kids would not like it spicy, so we will not do that. You can add in some extra garlic or some extra onion powder, anything like that, or chop up some garlic and onion, totally up to you. I'm gonna kind of stop here and just go ahead and turn this on. I'm gonna put it on low and just let this heat up. A couple of my little smokies are still a little frozen in the middle, so this is gonna have plenty of time to heat up. All right, friends, that wraps up this week of the pantry challenge for me. I know my rules are a little different than some other people's. I'm not a homesteader, but I am working with what I have, testing out my pantry, and so far, I think I did okay. There are a few things I know that I would want to be more stocked up on. We are not the biggest fans of canned and frozen vegetables. I mean, we don't hate them, we eat them. Um, but I think for future you know, use, I do want to stock up a little bit more on those just because I know my family will eat them and enjoy them a little more often than we already do. We are huge fans of fresh produce. I won't give that up if I don't have to, but we could do a little more canned veggies. So I think that's one of the things going on my list that I wanna change in my pantry for the future. But so far, things are working out nicely. I'm really, really happy. Um, I'm enjoying seeing what I can do in the kitchen, testing out some skills and making some good, good food. It's nothing super fancy and it's nothing super challenging, but it is 
good home cooking and I am loving it. My family's loving it. I'm having a great time with it. So I hope you will join me back here next week for another pantry challenge week of what's for dinner, as well as another pantry challenge grocery haul. I look forward to seeing you guys there. If you're into that kind of stuff, check out these videos popping up on the screen right now. YouTube thinks you might like them and I think you might too. If you like this kind of stuff, most of my videos are kitchen and food related, so you're probably gonna like them. Hit that subscribe button, stick around, check them all out, and I will see you guys soon with another video. Have a fantastic week, everyone.